morning, Lenny. Morning, Carol and Betty. Arlene and Randy. Morning, Christy. Good to have Rob and Elsa watching from Green Bay. Our prayers go out to Rob and Elsa as Elsa's mother is in hospice right now. Oh my, on the big screen. Still waiting for some of the carols to come online. Morning to the Gildermans. Oh, here come the carols. Morning to Carol. Well, I will go ahead and get started with some of our announcements. Council met this week, and the most important thing you need to know of our council meeting is that Christmas Eve services, what we've decided to do, and uh, much based on the weather, is that Christmas Eve will be Facebook Live at 9.09 p.m. 9.09 p.m. And <clears throat> we have sent home our luminary bags with you or we've delivered them to you and we wish them now to be brought to the church on Christmas Day night. That is when we will have the Christmas pilgrimage and we'll be meeting out in the parking lot for singing, and there'll also be Holy Communion on Christmas Day night. And again, I will make this announcement at the end of today's service, as some people are still coming online. It was kind of fun at our council meeting on Thursday night. Just one funny moment that you won't be able to laugh at, but you know, as we're speaking through mask, and some of us are Zoom, and some of us have called in, uh, Carol Lindahl was absolutely convinced that we wanted her to make coleslaw. And I can't remember if any council member wants to chime in what word I was saying through my mask that Carol absolutely thought was coleslaw. I can't remember, but it was funny. Also that night, our church is a charter church for the Scouts, and uh, we happened to be there for a historic moment that we have in the... Scouts of America, our first female Eagle Scout. She had her board that night, Maura Lubby, and she passed, and she is an Eagle Scout. And Superior Telegram will actually be coming out to the church tomorrow uh, to interview her. So very excited for a first female Eagle Scout. And with that, again, we'll talk more about Christmas Eve and what we'll be doing Christmas Day at the end of the service. For now, I invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship. Luminaries line the aisle as a reminder that this is the season when we proclaim that the light enters dimly lit places of our lives and our hearts and illumines us with a liberating and comforting message. This morning we continue with the theme anthem for this Advent that we've been following these four weeks. It follows the poem of anonymous Jewish person during the Holocaust. And these words were found scrawled in a cellar where they had been hiding. And this poem reminds us of the resilience of hope. Ha! Ah. I believe in the sun even when it's not shining. I believe in love even when I don't feel it. I believe in God even when God is silent. 
And now, not a part of the original poem, but we added this line to the poem this week. I believe in the light, the light that has come and is coming. May we never forget what can happen when evil is allowed to go unchecked. May we always use our art, our music, and our poetry, and most importantly, our simple acts of kindness as inspiration to create goodness, not evil, in this world. you to repeat after me. We see the star rising. We see the star rising. We hear the glad tidings. We hear the glad tidings. We know we are not alone. We know we are not alone. Thank you for the glimpses we catch of your gift of peace on earth, even in the midst of fear, of challenge, of struggle, even when we aren't sure that goodwill among us can be found. Light the flame of peace within us. We light the candle of hope, the candle of love, candle of joy, and our candle of peace. face the pain of life and embrace the assurance that light is already here and always coming. Amen. We gather in the name of God, the creator of light, of Jesus, the light of the world, and the Holy Spirit who illumines our path. You are invited in your own homes now to light your Advent for candle of peace. Let us pray. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without you nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Embrace us with your mercy that with you is our ruler and guide. We may live through what is temporary without losing what is eternal through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. For our readings today, We'll be doing a reading from Isaiah 9 and John chapter 1. And these two readings make use much of the metaphors of light and darkness. And in a racist society, there can be a sense that light is good and dark is bad. As we continue now with the rest of this service, and especially in my sermon, where I can avoid using the words dark or darkness, I will. And these events surely have come to us this summer and what we need to be aware of between light and darkness. A reading from Isaiah chapter 9. The people walked in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in a pitch-dark land, the light has dawned. 
You have made the nation great, you have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as those who divide plunder rejoice. As on the day of Midian, you've shattered the yoke that burdened them, the staff on their shoulders, and the rod of their oppressor. Because every boot of the thundering warriors and every garment rolled in blood will be burned fuel for the fire. A child is born to us, a son is given to us, and authority will be on his shoulders. He will be named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. There will be vast authority and endless peace for David's throne and for his kingdom, establishing and sustaining it with justice and righteousness now and forever. Word of the Lord. Our gospel reading today is from John's Gospel, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being to him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to see the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who receive him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of God, Father's only Son, full of grace and truth. The Gospel of our Lord. grace and peace to you from God our Creator and from Jesus Christ, who is the light and the Holy Spirit, the bringer of light. Amen. So here we are on December 20th, a few days out from Christmas and the day before the longest night of the year. Approaching the longest night. This pretty much sums up the feeling of 2020, doesn't it? Not the Christmas gatherings we had hoped for, but as people of faith, we also beautifully profess, though, that we are following the light of a star hovering over Bethlehem. Even as John's gospel testifies to the light, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. In this year of 2020 and the mid-winter of the pandemic, I struggle with John's words because they do not say what I want them to say. I want them to declare that when the light comes into the world, it obliterates. It takes the bleak midwinter, every sadness, every raw deal, every life-sucking disease, and tosses this whole mess into the cosmic trash bin. I want the light to arrive and win. I want it to win big. And I mean, I want the light to be so overwhelming that I can switch channels at halftime And that place without light isn't even going to peek out of that locker room door. That's what we want. We want the light to have overwhelming victory. But it's not where we're at. It's kind of like this. 
For those of us who live in the northern latitudes, and especially those who live above the Arctic Circle, there is a Norwegian word that describes this feeling. Merkatiten. I invite you to repeat that after me. Merkatiten. Merkatiten. Merkatiten is the time when the sun does not emerge above the horizon. The sun does not emerge above the horizon. Merkatiten. In the Arctic Circle, starting in August, the days lose 10 to 15 minutes of light each day. From then on, it's a relentless march towards the longest night. And that's how that <clears throat> pandemic has, helped, has felt for those of us in the upper Midwest. As early October went on, the relentless march of more and more positive COVID-19. We have experienced this lack of light coming. The light shines in the place without light. But nevertheless, the light, place, and presence does exist. The light coming to be with us. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Jesus described his light, light, the first act of creation. And this light becomes flesh and makes a home among us. Indeed, this Advent, we have looked at the beginning of each gospel and each Sunday, our sanctuary in the dark, and we've been following our luminary bags and our Advent wreath, moving closer and closer to the place where Jesus has promised to meet us in the body and blood in the meal of Holy Communion. But for now, tomorrow is the longest night. And we are told that the planets Jupiter and Saturn will appear as one star tomorrow. Some say the pair will look like an elongated star. Many are heralding them as the Christmas star and comparing them to the star of Bethlehem. Jupiter and Saturn will only be separated by 0 0.1 degrees. It's been 800 years since that's been able to be seen. So I wonder, will they? Or will they simply look like a double planet? We may not know here tomorrow in Poplar. Our forecast is mostly cloudy. But the truth is that no one knows who is alive today for certain what we're going to see tomorrow in the western sky. This hasn't happened in our lifetimes. But no matter whether we can see or not see, I know that there's going to be a star brightly shining in the sky tomorrow night. I believe in the sun even when it's not shining. I believe in love even when I can't feel it. I believe in God even when God is silent. I believe in the light that has come and is coming. So tomorrow night, this star, no matter what, I invite for it to have a special meaning for all of us this year, wrapped in a very long night. And to all the faithful, John has pointed the way for us, this way out of Mecca Deaton. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. We believe in the light that has come and is coming. Amen. Amen.
Our congregation has a ritual that we have done since the very first Sunday back in March, and we all share a piece of bread together. We call it our bread liturgy ritual. Normally we do the prayers of the people first, and then we have the bread liturgy. But for today it makes sense for the music we are using to do our bread ritual liturgy first, so I invite you to grab a piece of bread. And it's, it's a ritual we do because we, uh, we do not gather, and we believe that communion is a way that we share together as a body of Christ, but like the exiles, somehow they kept their faith alive while in Babylon. And this is a way we are keeping our memory of communion alive until such time it is safe to do so. For today we keep our memory alive that Christ is our light. At the beginning of creation, God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. God separated the light from darkness. In ancient times, God led the Israelites from slavery through the desert with pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. until we gather again far longer than we thought it would be. When the Israelites were wandering in the desert, they cried out to God, and God sent manna. I invite you to eat your bread. As you eat the bread, say a prayer for those who don't have enough to eat, that God would feed them too, and that we might be a part of the way that God answers those prayers. God has shown up in your life and in the lives of others. Take a moment to thank God for nourishing and sustaining you and sheltering you. Jesus the Word became flesh and lived among us. Christ light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. I invite you to join me in the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We will now continue with the prayers of the people today on this fourth Sunday of Advent and our 40th Sunday of exile. I will say Emmanuel, Emmanuel, and I invite you to respond with shall come to you. Emmanuel shall come to you. Jesus, you are our day spring, our dawn, our sunrise. Jesus, you send away the clouds of the night. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel. Come to our world with its division and hatred. Come with your gentleness. Come with your forgiveness. Emmanuel shall come to you. O come, thou branch of Jesse, come to the lost and the least and the lonely in our land, and let them know that they are valued and loved by you. Comfort those in nursing homes. Emmanuel shall come to you. Come, thou King of David, come to the church and show it how to serve you as you wish to be served. Come and make your gospel a living reality here in our time and place. Emmanuel shall come to you. Come, thou day spring, come to the sick and the suffering, come with your healing, come to the grieving with the offer of hope, come to the distressed and the dying with the promise of your peace. Emmanuel shall come to you. And now hear us as we share with you in a moment of silence the personal and private prayers of our hearts for ourselves and for those known to us and for those not known to us. O oh Lord Jesus, God with us, you came to rescue your people out of slavery, out of lonely bondage, and you are here with us now. You have appeared. Allow us to see your light today. Amen. I invite you to share, be well in Christ with one another. Be well in Christ.
Be well in Christ. Be well in Christ. We'll continue now with the benediction. You are invited to pick up this week's candle and prepare it to take and reside in the wreath and to hold it high for the benediction. In this season of waiting, know this, we wait for justice, but we do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wait to work for healing. We wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. We wait for peace, but we do not wait to work to eliminate hatred. And so my friends, like bells ringing out the news that the light has dawned and shines on all people, fill the night left by sadness with messages of peace. Go into your lives humming the tunes that keep that peace alive in you and that spur you on in your work of justice and reconciliation. Raise your voices and repeat after me. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Believe. Before we do our carol of resistance, I would like to finish first, though, with announcements, just to get the word out. Since council, we met on Thursday to decide what we were going to do with Christmas Eve. So those of you who are tuning in um, later in this broadcast, this is what's going to be. Christmas Eve is going to be a Facebook Live service at 9.09 p.m. There'll be nothing in the church before them. So 909 Facebook Live Christmas Eve. On Christmas Day, what the council was thinking is that Christmas Eve, it's going to be bitter, bitter cold, probably below zero temperatures, not a good day to be outside here in the evening. So stay home, enjoy your families. But tune in 9 again, 909 p.m. Christmas Eve. Bring your luminary bags in memory of loved ones and your other luminary bags to the church on Christmas Day night. It's a Friday. Most people have Christmas Day off. The church will be open from 4.30 to 5.30 for the Christmas Eve pilgrimage and the walkthrough. And there will be Holy Communion offered during the walkthrough of the church. And we'll keep the numbers down in the church as you walk through this special Christmas Eve pilgrimage we have set up for you. At 5.30, we will gather outside at the bell tower in front of our, the luminary bags of our loved ones, and there we'll have a short service and sing Silent Night. We'll open up the church again from six till seven for the next group if they wish to come later and have that same walk through six to seven. And then once again, we will gather at 7 o'clock outside. I do invite you to dress very warm. You won't need to take your coat off. The walk through through the church should not probably take more than, I would guess, 10 to 15 minutes. So 
dress very warm so that you can be outside. We will be sending out an email on this and contacting those who don't have internet. But for family and friends, uh, please help us get the word out. And for now, our sending song and our carol of resistance. Our carol of resistance today is Go Tell It on the Mountain. This is probably the best known African American Christmas song and the words seeker and watchman are thought by some to have been code words on the Underground Railroad. It was made popular by the Fisk Jubilee singers in the 19th century as these college students themselves freed slaves traveled the country to raise money and awareness. They were turned away from hotels and even some churches because of their color. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere, go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. And the song today is going to be uh, by our Holy Hootenanners. Go tell it on the mountain.
my home to yours. Be well in Christ.